Hi, and welcome to Post-COVID Marketing. What we're looking at today is the way people have changed following the impact of COVID, but also, of course, Brexit and what's going on in Ukraine, and really the security we feel in life and what our priorities are. Because either directly, if your business is a consumer, or indirectly, if your business to business, your target market will be thinking differently. And what is it you could be thinking about as to how you could address those new ways of thinking in your marketing material. So that's what we're going to be covering today. I'm David Betts, business coach based in Colchester and Essex, covering Essex and Suffolk. And I invite you to follow me on, on these YouTube channels as you don't then miss future topics. So where do we start? Let's look at the basics. And we look at the, the traditional way we've always thought of marketing. You have your marketing materials and what you then do is you generate the need, you create the understanding, the education, whatever, in your potential buyer, and then the prospect goes ahead and purchases. So in effect, this is the problem you're solving. This is working out how to get the prospect to realize your product can be a benefit to them and a value to them. So this is where we're working. So this is the area that although the area hasn't changed, the way the person's thinking making this decision has, and this is where we're looking at today. So what's happened with COVID? Let's look at it. The first sort of questions that people come up with, am I safe? Um, are my family and friends safe? Could my life change forever? What am I working to achieve? That's a core cool one. What's their purpose? And what is actually important to me? So really what's happening is that we've had a big shake up in life. We're less stable, less secure. And we're coming back to say, well, actually, what am I spending my time working towards? What does my future look like? What's my priorities? So this is all being thrown up in the air, in the, in the, the minds of your prospective market. The feelings this generates, fear, fear of the unknown, worry. You know, if you're worrying, you're thinking about what's going on, actually what's important, what could happen next, insecurity. Loneliness, you look at all the COVID isolation, that's a big impact really because you lose your close circle of friends. You may be in touch with them, but you haven't got that personal contact. Loss, loss of that contact, loss of communication, loss of closeness with others, and actually quite possibly loss of purpose. If your aim was to, you know, buy the next, next toy to show off to your friends, and now your friends aren't seeing what you've got in any case, actually your purpose is gone. So what are you gonna do now instead? What could you be, what could be important to you? And these sort of things are going through people's minds. So let's come back to work realities. Come back to work. Everybody's trying to restart businesses, going through all the, the hurdles there. Lots of people in work overload because they've got backlogs of things to do, things to get working in, lack of time, unfamiliar working arrangements. If they're working split between home and work, equipment that they're, they're now trying to synchronize between face-to-face -face and working remotely. You've got all that sort of things to work with, which is extra workload on the people. Remote working, as I've said, feelings of isolation. All these things are having an impact on you. What it can create is this whole thing of lack of focus in where somebody might have been totally focused on what they're gonna buy. Now they're distracted and that's what's creating another issue to deal with, to get that through that fog that's being created here. And we can look back at Maslow's hierarchy of needs because if we look at these from fundamentals, physiological needs is about the things around you. So uh, you, you're, um, have you got somewhere to live? Can you afford to pay the rent? Uh, can you afford to feed the family? These psychological things, you look at what's happening with food prices, with everything going up. Actually, you could say, that's a big question mark come over that for people at the lower end of the financial um, capability they are more at risk and they're going to have concerns in that area. So what about safety? And of course, safety, if you think of things, let's take the, the things like COVID, well, 
how's it going to affect me? That looks like that's we've gone through the worst of that now. So, you know, hopefully winter will be okay. But actually, how safe am I? Look at what's going on in Ukraine. How safe are we in the UK with what Putin's doing in Ukraine? Big question mark there. Belonging, big one here. If you've been used to working in, in the good old days in a, an office environment with lots of people around you, and now you've just spent a year or 18 months isolated in a room, if you live by yourself especially, that belonging is going to be really fragile. Unless your company is really on the ball and does lots of things to engage you as a team, it's very easy to overlook that as a business owner because you've got big problems to keep the business afloat. And actually, keeping your team feeling of belonging, that's a real dodgy one to maintain. What about esteem, recognition for things that you actually do and things you do well? Falls in the same bucket. The business owner is either struggling to keep up with the glut of orders because of COVID or is struggling to get the business to, to keep working in a totally different way. It's very easy to lose the focus on really sort of congratulating your team on doing a great job. So esteem drops off. What about self-actualization? This is about being given the responsibility to do a job, getting it done and then standing back from it and say, wow, I did that. How's that gone? Well, there's every chance that if you're not in an office, A, that's going to be limited to that. You can see it. Important point, nobody else can see it. None of your colleagues all gets isolated. So we've got all these areas are becoming very questionable in the way that we go forward. So what about the buying focus? What's happened there? If we take a, perhaps a cynical view here, people generally had would, would, would be described as being cash rich, time poor. So they worked for money to buy stuff. And the stuff was kind of a pacifier to say, well, I work hard, so I get the rewards from working hard. Actually, there's a strong underlying thing that this stuff was displaying social status. So if you buy an expensive car, everybody can see you've got an expensive car, big house, et cetera, et cetera. Now, with the isolation of what's gone on with COVID, does this still actually have the same relevance? If you're, if you're locked away, you start to question, well, I've just spent so many thousand on a, a new car and it's been sat in the garage for the last 12 months, it hasn't gone anywhere. What was the point of that? So you start to question your buying decisions. What effectively happened was COVID removed the audience and it gave you the time to reflect on actually what is long-term happiness. The outcome of this is that people are being more focused on personal well-being, whether that's mental health or physical health or those sort of areas. There is more of a thing of how do I make myself feel better rather than what do I do because everybody else around me is doing it. And that's the real thing here is this awareness of what makes a happy lifestyle. And this is the crux of what's going on here. So the marketing approach has had a, a twist because if we're starting to say, well, about well-being, what becomes important in that well-being? And that can be, you can look at all the environmental things going on at the moment. So you can look at the way that businesses treat people, look at the way that businesses contribute to the environment that you live in. And what's happening is, that the, the prospect focus, particularly in the younger generation, is coming very much more strongly to business ethics as well as competence. So they want to know that you can do the job, but actually, what do you tell them about your business ethic, ethics? What's important to you as a company? And even more important than that, how do you show that that's important? Because the ethics they've shown us to be three times more important than the competence. Because of course, this is a new area to look at. Everybody wants to know that if you're gonna buy something, you're gonna buy a car, you wanna know it's gonna work and be reliable. But actually, what's the, what's the car manufacturer doing as far as environmental issues, looking after the local community? That has now become a top issue in the buying selection. What about ethics then? Brand responsiveness. So this means that within your company brand, how do you respond to things? Do you have the ability to 
respond to a query from your prospect buyer, dedicated answers, not just blase statements. So can you give an autonomy in what you respond to to them personally? Have you showing competence and relatedness to what their concern is? That's starting to be seen as a key issue about brand, how you behave in that way. What about self-congruency? If you're congruent, is it realistic and believable to people that you're doing that? Or is it just a facade? Century brand experience. Now, this reflects the fact that buying is an emotional thing. So if you think about this, if you can create emotion in their buying experience, you actually engage with them better because you're, you're dealing with them at a, to a certain extent, a subconscious conscious level, you're engaging with them. And there's different things. You could think of things like Red Bull. They've got an, an excitement side. They've got adventure sports, extreme activities. That would be an, a, engaging with their emotion, with their senses. But if you're a coffee shop, the aromas of the, you get in the coffee shop would be a century thing, another obvious thing. The food and drink industry would be around those ages. But what can you do to get across this thing about how you engage with their emotion? Corporate social responsibility, are they pulling their weight? How do you as a company benefit the environments around you and give something back to the community? And how do you tell them about that? because it's already well to do it. It's another thing to make everybody know you do it because this is now the core of your marketing activity. You need to think about how you tick these boxes and how we get down that avenue. So I hope that's been useful to you. Um, hopefully you picked up some good, good ideas to think about and what you put relevant into your business. If any problems with that, give me a call. Very happy to talk them through. Um, and love to see any comments on this video. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Otherwise, catch you on a future video. Thanks very much. I'm David Betts, business coach based in Colchester. All the best.